Let's talk about mind mastery. Let's talk about how to reprogram the mind. Because make no mistake, our minds already have been programmed. No matter what anybody says, we went to public school systems. We sat in front of television sets growing up. Constantly. Our identity in who we think we are has been built up over the years through society, through the music we listened to growing up. So when somebody asks how to reprogram or master their mind and how to get rid of negative thoughts, you first have to understand how those negative thoughts got there in the first place. We pick them up somewhere in our past. They don't just magically show up. So, you know, childhood traumas and things that happen to you when you're young, that's one thing. But you also have all kinds of indoctrination. What matters is identifying that it's there and understanding that those negative thoughts were a part of your past. From there, you can move forward. You have to reassess the situation. For example, I grew up in the 90s. There was an era of gangster rap, and we loved it. It painted a picture of what was going on in certain neighborhoods and certain areas in the world. At the time, gangster rap started to flourish. We looked at it like, you know, it's just like the movies. If the Terminator could kill 50 people off the top of the building, police cars and all this stuff, then hip hop artists could talk about what goes on in the neighborhood that they see and stuff like that. Some of the older generation said, you know, that stuff is polluting your mind. That music right there is polluting your mind, guys. What did most of us say when we were younger? No, it's not. We were ignorant to the fact that it was infusing itself into our whole being. As we grew up, what did we do? We emulated. We wanted to sell drugs too. We got in trouble, we got arrested. So when you come to a certain age and you ask yourself, man, what happened? and you see all the events and all the programming that led up to that point, you start to understand. You know, and it, when it's happening to everybody in your social circle, you think it's normal. It's just something that happens. Everybody's rolling, doing the same thing. So that's how you get caught up and you end up in a situation. But it's the thinking that got you there in the first place. In my case, my thinking and my ignorance got me there in the court system rolling through institutions. So you get to a point where you got to take accountability. You grow up, you say, you know what? Yeah, that was some nonsense. And then what you try to do is correct course. So you recognize what was one of the things that caused the issue and you fix it. The second step is to replace negative thoughts with positive thoughts. This is why goals, dreams, and aspirations are so important. Because if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up anywhere. So basically, the same way we were singing the lyrics of The Infamous or N.W.A. or Dr. Dre The Chronic and all these other gangster rap albums. I mean, a lot of these albums, I still know from the first song to the last song, I know every single lyric in the album. Onyx, All We Got Is Us. Like, some of these albums are just entrenched into my brain. Think about how much dedication that takes to memorize that. That's repetition, playing it over and over and over again, singing to it over and over again, rapping to the lyrics. If you want that kind of congruence with your dreams, your goals and objectives, and mastering your mind for positive thinking, then you have to have that same diligence and that same discipline you used to memorize those rap lyrics. It's just that simple. It's not really a complicated formula. Whatever you spend more time doing, your outcome is right around the corner. So if you plan your day, you make sure you get enough exercise, you make sure you eat healthy foods that are gonna feed your body and your mind. You make sure the information that you're reading about is positive, because you can read about negative things too. Watch out for what they're showing you on the TV screen, because Negativity sells. Negativity traps you in. It's, it's attractive. Your brain automatically wants to look out for negativity because it's designed to look out for danger. So if you spend all your life looking out for danger, you never reveal your potential to yourself. It's not going to happen that way. So you've got to spend your time on growth and progression and achievement. Also, 
people don't ask enough questions to themselves. You got to be a good question asker and you got to look for the answers. You can't just say, oh, I wonder why this, eh, and then go back to whatever shows you watch on TV or whatever social media you scroll on. No, if you ask yourself a question, you think about it. Let me get the answer to that. Get the answer and write it down. But asking questions and answering those questions and writing them down on a piece of paper so you're continuously learning and you're continuously getting to the next level and improving, people don't do enough of that. You might hear a word that you don't understand. You might say, hmm, I wonder what that word is. I should look it up sometime. And you never do. Instead of procrastinating on answering your question, get it answered right away. We have infinite knowledge at our fingertips and people don't even use the technology that we have to answer the questions that are in their heads. When you start getting good at asking enough questions, recording the answers, so you have them right at your disposal, you start to build a repertoire of things to draw from. It's like a bank. You're banking all these ideas, these thoughts, definitions to words that you didn't know. All this knowledge accumulates and it culminates into who you become. Also, Dr. Amen, he has this book where he talks about how us human beings, we're gonna have negative thoughts automatically just jump into our head from time to time. Me, personally, like when I'm driving in traffic, sometimes I just wanna curse people out. I wanna run them off the road, <laughs> to be honest with you. Sometimes I might lose control and verbally let them have it if I need to, but I've been trying to get better at not doing that, controlling it. Relax. It's not that big of a deal. Somebody cut in front of me and slowed down. Whatever. My brakes work. I use my brakes. I'm going to let it slide. The more I can let it slide and stay aware of any negative thoughts that may get me into trouble, the more in control of myself I become. So instead of me lashing out at that guy that a cut in front of me and made me slip on my brakes a little bit. I just let it go. He's probably going to get pulled over. He's probably going to have a traffic violation someday and he'll learn whoever it was in the car. So negative thoughts creep into our minds. Doesn't have to be traffic. It could be anything. You might be ruminating about thinking somebody is thinking something or saying something about you that isn't even true. The more you fester into these negative thoughts, the worse they become and the more they control your life. Uh, if I let that person in traffic, because I've done this before, where somebody cut in front of me, I slammed on my brakes, stuff fell on the floor, and, you know, I, I kind of cursed him out a little bit, and he didn't even care. He just drove off. But I literally let that ruin my whole day. I was pissed for the whole day. Even days after I thought about it, I still had a, 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 a visceral reaction every time I thought about it. I said to myself, as I'm driving again, I'm like, I gotta stop thinking about this. Like that guy really ticked me off to the point where it's still affecting me weeks later when I think about that certain situation. Like I think about it and I'm like, well, oh, I could have done this to him. I should have, I should have threw the drink that spilled in my car. I should have just threw it at his car. I'm thinking all these negative thoughts. And I'm like, that event is history. And first of all, that wouldn't have been a good idea to throw the drink at his car. So I'm glad I didn't. It's not an easy thing, right? Especially when something jolts you like that. But just think about how, if you're in control in a situation like that, you are able to stay cool headed. I mean, I almost crashed into this dude. If my reaction time was slow, that would have been an accident right there. However, if I would have remained my cool, maybe if I pulled up beside him, say, hey, you know what? We almost got into an accident. You know, that was not a good idea, right? in a calm manner, the message would have got across better and I wouldn't have been freaking out the way I was. So my reaction, realizing my reaction was totally unnecessary. And where did it come from? Did it come from the way I grew up? People in my life had tempers. So I thought this is the way I'm supposed to deal with situations like this is use my anger. That could be part of it. But at the end of the day, was it serving me? And what I found was, it wasn't because it was making me angry and upset weeks later. So not only did it cost me like spilling the drinks in my car, 
it cost me that time. And this is the most important thing. You only have a certain amount of time in life. If you're going to spend it on negative thoughts, you're wasting the time. It's such a huge waste. Instead of wasting your time on negativity, it's so important to switch that mindset and think more positively. Think towards growth. Think towards self-control. And as for the people you surround yourself with, this is going to be a big deal. People in your immediate circle, right? What is their mentality like? Do they like to settle for less? Do they have tempers? Do they lash out over small trivialities? Do they believe in themselves? Do they think big and take action? See, there's different levels to all kinds of negative people. We all have a negative side to us, so I'm not, act, I'm not sitting up here acting like I'm just some perfect person, all high and mighty. No, I have negativity with me too. This is the way I grew up. But I work and I strive every day to overcome it. And that's the point. Because when you stop trying to overcome negative thoughts, they build a nest in your mind and it festers in there until something manifests from that negativity. So when we're talking about manifestation, it goes both ways. It doesn't just go one way. But this is just the beginning because when you're manifesting, you ultimately can't manifest anything until you start to take action. So just like you take action on negative things, when somebody ticks me off in the car and I lash out on them and I manifest myself into a jail cell, the same way you manifest with positivity. See, it's easier to take action on negativity, even if it's just apathy or apathetic action where you don't care and you don't do nothing anymore because you're doom and gloom and the world is just coming to an end. So you just throw up your hands and say, forget everything. You're able to take more high vibrational action when you're positive. And also when your mindset is positive, you have more energy. You have more life force flowing through you. Literally, you can see your aura, your spirit is vibrant. It's bouncing off of every other human being you come in contact with. So how do we stay consistent and how do we maintain with positive thinking throughout the day, throughout the weeks, the months, the years, the decades? What we have to do is we've got to be mindful and we have to remember, we got to have the discipline to take action. So let me give you an example. Say you buy a book and you want to read this book. They say that most people read the first chapter and they don't even finish the book. That's crazy to me. And then you have some people who they'll read most of the book. They'll probably read about 80% of the book and then they'll put it down and they'll just forget about it. Some people may just finish the book. They may implement one or two things in the book, but not much. When you get a book, any book, read that book, take notes, literally implement everything in the book. That's what the book is for. Now you're using your time to implement all these jewels that you get from the book. It could be any positive book of your choosing. Make sure you're crossing off everything on that list. Extract all the wisdom out of the book. Take notes on it, write it down. Teach it to somebody else. Action. The more you teach it to other people, the more it sinks into your own brain. When you have the average person that reads m maybe most of the book, but doesn't teach it, doesn't take any notes on it, doesn't even highlight anything, and they just forget everything they just read. So when you read a book, actually study the book until that book becomes one with you and make sure you pick a good book. This is an exercise that I think can be really helpful. Let's take one of the most popular books, for example, Think and Grow Rich or How to Win Friends and Influence People. Now, there are so many things in those books that you can take action on right away. You don't need capital or startup funds to do it. All you need to do is take action on what is in the book. And when I used to read books years ago, I used to just read them to try to put all the knowledge or download all the knowledge into my brain so that I can have it there for a later time, which was the wrong way to look at it. I should have been reading the books as soon as I learned whatever it was in the book that was helpful. I should have been going to implement that right away and then recording and taking notes on what's happening. That's the real way you get into a book. When you do things like this, you're controlling what your mind is paying attention to. Because the person that's there, he's studying books, he's reading, he's learning constantly. And then you have the other person who sits in front of the news and just absorbs all this fear mongering or listening to negative music, programming their mind with the negative music, constantly bombarding into their brains. And then you go and you do that for 10 years. Fast forward, 
The person who's studying and reading the books is going to be light years ahead of the person who's just sitting in front of the TV or just listening to the negative music. It's the compound effect. So, you, I mean, you can listen to negative music once in a while, dance, have fun, get your energy up, cut it off and get right back to your main goal and your purpose. But if you continue to do that day by day by day, and it's addictive and it's, it's an addictive adrenaline rush type of vibe. Negativity can become very addictive and you're doing it every day. Negative, negative, negative every day. Five, 10 years down the road, you're going to look back on your life and say, damn, why didn't I do this back then? You ever have that thought? Man, I should have applied myself to this certain thing years ago. It happens to a lot of us. And some people, they don't care, right? Those people don't have a purpose. Their purpose on this earth is to serve somebody else. If you're watching this video, your purpose is an individuated purpose that comes from you. You're the creator of your destiny. Nobody else is going to tell you what to do. So take control of your mind.